Oh, Lord, I just thank you so much just for this wonderful opportunity, God, that we have to come before you and um, get, get into your word. Jesus, I just pray that right now you would empty me completely of myself. Lord Jesus, that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, Father God, and that, Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit would just take over. Lord, knowing what every single woman in this room needs to hear today. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for just being our good shepherd. And, Lord Jesus, I pray that this time would be refreshing to our soul. Jesus, that we would walk away just with a new love for you and a new adoration and just a new excitement, Father God, um, of what you're doing in our lives. Jesus, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I, I'm just going to read it real quick. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, and he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my, my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love, oh my gosh, it's so good. But okay, so Psalm 23, here's a little bit of history. And this is my kryptonite because this becomes my favorite part of any study. I grew up at Chino Hills and Pastor Jack would go into, I, I think like four Sundays worth of background. And it was my favorite part of starting any book. So I got a little lost in the weeds here, and I was like, ever, it's totally okay, it's fine. So this is the part that I'm really excited about for um, all of us to kind of look at it in a different way. Psalm 23 was written by our beloved King David, and even though he wrote almost half of the Psalms of the, New, of the Old Testament, this was one of the most famous ones. He's called the shepherd king of Israel. He was the youngest son of Jesse, and when anointed, when anointing um, our trying to find out who the future king of Israel would be, he was like, hey, don't you have any more sons? And um, Jesse goes, well, just David, but he's out with the sheep. And he goes, he's the one I need to see. Bring him on in. And so um, he was the youngest son of Jesse who was anointed as a young boy to be the future king of Israel. One of his most famous exploits is that he is the boy who grabbed five smooth stones and he killed Goliath. Now, knowing that he's the youngest brother, it makes sense, right? <laughs> he also ran over and he chopped off his head. That sounds like a little brother too, kind of, right? He was, he was a gnarly dude, but he had these five smooth stones. And how did he become such a sharp shooter with those things that he could get a giant right between the eyebrows? Well, he was a shepherd. So he took his serious skills with that little thing. Um, but David's life as a whole was just full of ups and downs. He was a known leader, right? We know that he had his mighty men of valor and that he was a warrior because even when running from Saul and he was fighting in these wars, it was being said and saying of him, oh, Saul kills his thousands and David his ten thousands. He was a warrior man. He, was, he made really, really good decisions sometimes and then he made really, really bad decisions sometimes like uh, Uriah and Bathsheba and all that stuff. So. We know a lot of things about King David. We know that he was a husband and a father. We know that when he married Bathsheba and they had their baby, they lost it. And so he was a grieving father. He was betrayed. We know that he was a precious friend to his best friend, Jonathan. Their friendship is known and looked at and loved on in the Bible. And that was who David was as well. He was hated. Saul hated David. He went after him. He was so threatened that he was going to take his spot, man. He even though he knew it was coming, he, he was after him. So David was loved and hated, but God also calls David a man after his own heart, which I love. And David, in his spunk and excitement, he stripped down and he danced before the Ark of the Covenant as it was coming in. I just can't, I just picture that and I just laugh. I'm like, I get why his wife was a little like, oh, look at you, buddy. What are you doing over there? I mean, I would probably trip out too, but I mean, God knew his heart, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, he had so much life experiences with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then eventually, David became king of Israel. And he arrived at the highest power that he possibly could. 
And as a sitting king of Israel, he sits down to write a poem, which super love that for him, right? It's so cute. He's a warrior man. He's killed his 10,000s. He's wrestled bears and he's wrestled lions. And he's yet, what does he do? He sits down, he plays the harp and he's a musician and he writes poetry. And it's like, dude, stud, this guy's awesome. <laughs> um, but anyways, is he is meditating on these things and he's meditating on the Lord. And I just picture him as a young shepherd boy. And he's meditating as he lays there in the crook of where he protects his sheep because David was a shepherd. And as he is grown and he's had all these life experiences, yet as a king, he goes and he sits down to write the psalm. And what does he do? He puts himself back to his roots. And he goes and he's like, oh, I'm just a sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. And I love so much. That's why he's a man after God's own heart. He humbled himself. He's the king. You cannot get any more powerful than King David was at this time. Yet he humbled himself. He went back to his roots, and he relates himself to a simple sheep. So the two parties in this psalm, David knew well on both sides. He knew sheep, and he knew shepherds, because he, he dealt with both. So sheep, David knew sheep. So we're going to talk a little bit about what a silly sheep is. Sheep were vulnerable and helpless. They are considered a prey animal, which means they can't defend themselves other than trying to run away from something. So they tend to get attacked and, you know, all that stuff, which is why they need constant supervision of the shepherd. Kind of like toddlers, guys. Like, I mean, you know, you're in those toddler days, and you're like, nope, don't eat that. Nope, don't touch that. Nope, oh, don't fall off that thing. And you're constantly saving their little lives, right? Because they're always trying to kill themselves. Like, come on, like, just behave. Just be good and don't do that. So David, he knew sheep. And he said, to say it nicely, like, sheep are, sheep are kind of dumb. They will literally follow each other off a cliff to their deaths. Like, they're just followers. They'll just go. Um, even in the way that their makeup is, their, their coat, unless sheared, will grow so big and so thick and fill with so many elements of mud, dirt, sticks, and whatever else that it will crush them if they, have, if they are not sheared every year. So if you see, I mean, they literally look like a mud ball. I watched, so, I mean, because I was studying sheep, Instagram all of a sudden wanted to tell me all the things about sheep in these little reels. And oh my gosh, they're so cute. They're so fun. You see the happy sheep that are just like ding, ding, ding. They're bouncing in everywhere. Like I want to see that in real life. I want to see a sheep get the zoomies in real life. It'd be so rad. But, um, but these little sheep, I saw one that it looked like it hadn't been sheared in probably three years. And that thing, it literally looked like a potato. It was just brown and full. You couldn't see its eyes, couldn't see anything. And without the care and attention of a shepherd, that sheep will die on its own. Kind of like us. <laughs> um, it needs guidance to find food and water and constant protection from everything from bugs to bears, right? We know that, like, they're a prey animal, so anything can attack them. But even a simple bug can drive a sheep totally insane. Um, there's different personalities to a flock of sheep. There's the rebellious sheep, sheep, the one that wants to run away. We all know those kind of people, right? <laughs> I'm just, for me, what I started doing is like, who am I in this flock of sheep? Like, which personality am I? So there's a rebellious sheep, someone who's always trying to run off, which is why we have the story of um, the good shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes after the one lost sheep. Because when they're his sheep, he's going to protect them. He's going to guide them. He's going to keep them from anything bad happening to them. Then there's the anxious sheep. There's the, the pacers or the worry worts and the ones. But what happens is when these sheep are anxious and they're worrying, I was reading in this book, A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23, and he was talking about how he had the most amazing sheep and he loved her so much and she made beautiful babies. And then, but she would, what she would do is she would pace and she brought anxiousness to their flock. And eventually, because she wouldn't ever calm down no matter what he did, he had to take her out. So bad. It made me so sad. But she started teaching it to her babies and all of this stuff. And so, I mean, I get it. A shepherd's got to do what he's got to do, right? But, I mean, whatever. I don't get it. 
Um, so, sorry. But yeah, then there's the constant escape artists. The shepherds will actually, these sheep that try and get out all the time, and then they start teaching the other little sheep to do the same thing. Like, oh, I'm just going to run away. Oh, I'm going to run away. And in this herd, then you see there's the one go off, and that's where the slingshots come in. Sometimes they'll try and hit them with a rock on the booty to bring them back in. They're like, oh, sorry. You know, like, just check. We're going to, okay, we're going to go back over here. And he brings them back into the fold. But if they continue to go off and to go off and to go off, what he will actually do is he'll take his rod, which is awesome. He takes it, and he'll actually break the leg of his sheep and drape it around his neck, which is kind of actually where we also see that. You guys have seen that painting, right? I mean, they're everywhere. There's probably a million versions of it. But a shepherd with, like, a sheep over his neck. And he does that so that as that leg heals, he gets this runaway sheep, gets used to being near the shepherd. Because that's where it's safe, that's where it's healthiest, and that's where it's best for him to be, is close to the shepherd. So yes, there's the bozo sheep, the rebellious sheep, there's all of the sheeps in between. But the most beautiful part of this sheep and shepherd story, to me, is that a sheep will know its shepherd's voice. You can see there's like in the Middle East still, if they have all of these sheep, I mean there's like thousands, and if these shepherds go and walk off, they each have their own sound that they do when they get their sheep. One is like, and it goes, and those sheep know, oh, okay guys, sorry, we're leaving, and it'll go follow its shepherd. It is absolutely awesome. But just like in John 10, 27, where it says, my sheep, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Do we know the voice of our shepherd? So now we're going to look at shepherd. In some, it's not some cute little precious moment figurine <laughs> with a little boy with a cloth on his head, and he carries a little stick with a hook on it. That, yes, that is kind of what a shepherd actually looks like, but that's not all. Shepherds are gnarly. They are like big dudes who they have to learn like David. He had to learn to fight off a bear and a lion and wolves on the regular because sheep were constantly trying to be, get, trying to like be attacked. And so what he would do is he would, they take their rod and they chuck it at the lion or they chuck it at the bear and go and choke him out. And I mean, it was pretty crazy that you think somebody's going to kill a bear and kill a lion just with a huge old stick and, you know, God's power on his side. But that is the life of a shepherd, always protecting the sheep and keeping them from hard, from hard situations and from being attacked and all that stuff. But they're gnarly. They're buff. They're strong, obviously. They are not afraid to protect their sheep, but they're also intimate. Shepherds had to be intimate because a sheep, given the opportunity, is going to be attacked by a ton of bugs or flies or whatever. Um, he would have to check his sheep's face and its nose. So he had to get up close and intimate. He had to know the sheep. He didn't know every sheep, but he knows his sheep. And that's what King David's relationship to the flock of sheep that he was talking about right here. It's that King David knows that the relationship of a shepherd to his sheep is precious. He's going to protect us, and he's also going to be intimate in our every need. We can see it through different eyes now. And so as we look and we see the background of a shepherd and a sheep, I want to look at these verses. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. The God of all the universe is your shepherd. The creator of the beautiful skies and the mountains and the painting that he does every night for us in the sunsets. And he created the stars also, right? So if you go outside at the, in the nighttime and you look up into these beautiful, beautiful skies, the shepherd who has you in his hand says, I created the stars also. It's like, that's crazy to me. That's so, that, I trip out on that all the time, you guys. I'm such a nerd. Okay. But <laughs> he is my shepherd. That means that I can trust his will for me, like a shepherd, to lead me as any good shepherd would. He's not, he knows that what is good for you and he knows what is bad for you. Sheep are so, so vulnerable that even the tiniest irritant, like, um, like I said, like flies and bugs and stuff will get to them. And they will take it, and they'll get so messed up by it. They'll bang their heads against a rock and ultimately really, really hurt themselves and ultimately kill themselves. Um, one time I was watching, well, okay, like I told you, Instagram was showing me all the cute videos. But there was this video, and like where I came from back home in California, I'm not supposed to say that out loud anymore, I guess, but that's where I'm from. We didn't have all these really cool canals and stuff like that that we have here. And so I see it now, and it makes a little bit more sense. But 
there was this gnarly canal filled with all this water, and this sheep, this shepherd man, he had on his, what is it, those things called when the guys go hunting? What, waders, thank you. Yeah, they, they, he had on his waders, and he's in the mud, and he's in the muck, and he's pulling this big black thing out, and it was a sheep, and he pulls it out, and he gets it, and it's out of that ravine. And he looks tired, and he's starting to climb out, and that sheep just goes boop, 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 boop straight into the water again. That's us. <laughs> that is us. But the good shepherd goes and he pulls them out again, right? Because he loves them. But not every shepherd is good. Some shepherds are actually bad and they will not take care of their sheep. And when escaped, they'll just, they won't even try. They'll just take them out. They'll just, you know, throw them, throw them back into the ravine, let them, whatever. But God, he, with his loving eye, he provides exactly what we need for us. I shall not be in want. God is my provider. A shepherd's job is to take care and to make sure that they have food, drink, protection, and the same thing goes for us. He promises that he is going to provide for us, right? He says he promises to feed the birds of the air, and how much more valuable are you than they? We don't need to worry about simple provisions because we know that our God provides. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, and he restores my soul. As a shepherd is on the constant lookout, there are several, several dangers these little goofballs can encounter, and the sheep know it. They know, like they're prey animals. So I didn't know this because they're so strong and so big, but horses are prey animals as well, and my daughter has a horse. So if somebody comes up behind it, apparently a horse can see from like, it can't see right in front of itself, but it can see from here to its tail, which is like, that's pretty cool. But, I mean, so everything that comes up behind it, they're like, whoa, what's that? You know, and it's this big 1,200-pound animal, and you're like, chill out, dude. Like, it's not all that serious. But a sheep, they know that, they're on, that they can be hunted, right? So they tend to freak out really, really easily. Um, they don't lay down just naturally. They have to be fed. They have to have water. They have to know that they're safe and that they're free of irritants like bugs and gnats in their nose. They have to be free of all these things. So it takes an attentive, good shepherd that knows his sheep and takes care of his sheep for this to make sense, for them to lie down in green pastures, which I love because God has to take care of, he takes care of all of those things for us before we lie down. He leads me beside the still waters. He provides all those things for me. And also, for green pastures, I don't know if anybody has been to Israel, but it's not always rolling with green hills, right? There's like some rocky terrain. There's hard situations that they have to go through, and he leads them through those things. It's pretty neat. But um, sometimes when the bad shepherds will just throw sheep into a field, they lock them away, sheep will overgraze the land, which makes it actually like die. It'll kill all of the grass of that field and stuff. So it's the attentiveness to the details that he gives us where he goes and he finds the green pasture, which is healthy, bug-free. He makes us all, all set. But um, they know that when their shepherd is near, they are protected. They're at peace and they're happy. They've eaten and drank, and now they're still in danger. <laughs> and that's because just the simple weight of being a sheep. Sadly, when sheep go and they see, oh, like there's this beautiful hill and it's so fluffy and that grass looks great and my shepherd's there and I'm good and I've been fed and I've been taken care of and I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna go lay down on that little field, right? And they go and lay down and if it's a little too deep and the grass is a little too fluffy and there's a little too much good stuff, bloop, they just plop right upside down. Their feet straight up in the air and that's when you call casting themselves. Horses do it too, but they usually get stuck in like the bars of something. It's, it's unbelievable how easy these little animals can hurt themselves. But they roll over and they're unable to get themselves out of this situation. There is absolutely nothing that they can do to help themselves. If not rescued by their shepherd, they're going to die. Like just by being a sheep and laying down, this is like, this is how much we need our Heavenly Father just by going and just doing the whatever situation, we're completely at his mercy. But what happens is that when you look at Psalm 23, it says the shepherd describes what it is to, oh, sorry, the shepherds look at Psalm 23. He describes what it is to restore a sheep. 
just like in the verse that says, he restores my soul. So this silly sheep is in a position it should never be in, right? Upside down in the middle of a field is not something that a prey animal should ever be in that position. But he is. Sometimes we're in positions we shouldn't be in either, right? That's super us, <laughs> those little sheep. Um, but he is completely at the mercy of his shepherd, just like us, even though we might not like it as like type A controlling people that we can tend to be. Um, we don't like to be out of control of anything, but when we know that our good shepherd has us in his sights, we can rest. We can be okay. So what happens is that sweet shepherd, he comes over and he sees, oh, you little sheep, you're just like rolled over on your back here. Okay. And if they don't know how long they've been there, they have to really assess the situation and lay them back down on their side and kind of roll them a couple times to get the gases that have built up in their tummies to, you know, alleviate whatever that, I don't know. Is that, now that I was thinking about that, does that mean what I think it means? Okay, sorry. Moving on. Anyways, <laughs> then what he starts to do is he starts to rub their legs, rubs their legs and rubs their feet because as neuropathy sets in, they start to lose feeling and now they can't even stand up straight. So what he'll do is he'll put, the good shepherd will put these sheep right in between his legs and he's rubbing their legs just like this, so that they can start to regain, regain feeling in their legs. Part that I love so much about this is that they could never do it to themselves. A sheep cannot restore itself to right. We cannot restore ourselves to right. We know when we're not right with God. We know, and we know the things that we need to do. But sometimes, man, when you're reading and you're praying, you're like, I just don't feel anything. Lord, where are you? Are you here? Are you with me? Are you listening? And he's like, just wait. I'm rubbing your legs. I got to. I'm going to roll you over just a little bit. I'm going to start taking care of those things. And sure enough, he brings us back into his flock. So when we decide to get goofy and we mess around in the fluff of the world and we end up sideways and upside down, we need to ask God to restore our soul to help us, to sturdy us, to dust us off and refresh us and let us loose. Let's go, okay? <laughs> um, but in looking at how kindly he restores these sheep, I have to ask, has there been a time in your life or are you going through it right now where it's a soul-crushing dark valley of depression, a time where you're losing a loved one or a parent and maybe friendships that you didn't see breaking apart? Whatever the situation However, cast down, the elements of the world are crushing, you guys. When things get weighty, we need to ask God to restore us and ask God for that time of refreshing. God knows best, and he's personal, and he knows exactly the way that you need it. He knows exactly what his sheep need. So we just ask him to move. <clears throat> when I was looking at all this stuff and refreshing, I'm like, what are ways that people are refreshed? And I. Of course, the one that comes to my mind most is Elijah because he's like, I'm the only person that's doing any good in this world. And in our world today, it's so easy to get to that place because you're like, everybody's crazy. Everybody's lost their mind. Everybody's going woke. And is there even anybody who wants to do what's right? And God says, okay, Elijah, come here, little Eli. Let's go. You just lay under this tree. Let me give you a little cake. Let me give you a sip of water. And then he's, he's like, you just need a little, a little nap right now. I mean, we see it in our kids, right? I remember having toddlers and they're crying about something and that sock doesn't look right and I don't want this. And you're like, oh honey, you just need, it. here's a snack, take a nap, wake up, different kid, right? <laughs> like we, and I mean, sometimes I want to put myself on that timeout. Sometimes I need a nap and a snack and I just a little, I mean, I, I, I'm not too old for that, right? I mean, it just has to happen. Uh, so, <laughs> Marcia said it, but we have, David and I have been married for about 20, coming up on 20 years in May, and that's unreal to me, because I still feel like I'm like 25, like, so that's just insane, I mean, I'm 41, but whatever, <laughs> um, but we've, I, I've seen him super burnt out and super tired, like, to a, a crazy extent, like, twice in his like, since I've known him, but to an extent where I'm like, bro, like, something's got to happen right now, and one of those was just a few weeks ago. He's just been going at a pace that's, like, 
insane. And so I looked at him, I'm like, your eyes used to be blue, and now they're kind of gray, and you look like you're going to die. <laughs> and so we took a time away, and we went um, away, he and I. We never do that. Like, I'm not the kind of mom that's like, yeah, totally, peace, kids. I'm like, well, don't they want to come? Like, that'd be kind of fun. You know, what if all six of us, and he's like, it's not really getting away. Like, me and you, let's get away. So I, we went away. I was a good wife. <laughs> and we left the kids at home, and we went, and God was so, so good. And I really, really felt like I was genuinely watching the Bible happen right there because we were able to check into our hotel really early. And to the man who does not rest, it's like God put him to sleep. Man, it was like, okay, cool, just sleep, take a nap. And then he wakes up and he's like, what time is it? I'm like, it's only been two hours. Do you want a snack? Do you want to eat something? Eat something. Go back to bed. Go back to sleep. And it was so neat. For two full days, pretty much all he did was sleep and eat. And I'm texting my kids and my daughter's like, mom, you're supposed to be on vacation with your husband. Just, I'm like, he's sleeping the whole time, dude. This is what it is for. But like, did you clean your room? And did you get to, you know? <laughs> I was driving her crazy. But sometimes all that our body needs is just some rest and relaxation and refueling. And after about two days of that, I saw his eyes turn turquoise again. And I was like, babe, your eyes are back to normal. And it's like, we really do need that. You can't neglect those things when we just need that time of refreshing. So sometimes is it sleep and eat? How do you guys find your time of refreshing? I know for introverts, I've turned in somewhat of an introvert. I'm trying to, like, get myself back out of that shell again. But sometimes it's being at home with your Bible, a candle, a good book, a blanket in that cozy corner, and you just find that time of refreshing and filling that way. But, like, sometimes it's by being with a good friend. Like Paul, when he talked and he wrote in Philemon 1.7, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective and acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. I love that. Are you the kind of friend that is refreshing to someone? Are you the person who needs refreshing from your friends? I just love that we have the ability to be refreshed by that. So in this race that we're in of life, we go through these crazy valleys. We go through peaks and exciting times. It can be scary, but in those times, remaining close to our shepherd is key. Keeping him in our sights will keep that fear aware, away. You know, in, in that verse when it says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, but you are with me. I will fear no evil. And that's so neat because the truth is, is that when we're little kids and big kids <laughs> and something scary happens, you want to be by the person who keeps you safe. You want to be by your parents. You want to be by your kids want to be in your bed. My daughter has this new little thing where she's seven, but she goes and she's like, she goes, I had a bad dream. And she's in our bed in 13 seconds and she just jumps right in. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, she's coming in here with us. It's okay. So, but you just want to be by your protector. So once he restores us and once he sends us back into the flock, this verse I absolutely love. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I just love this part because it says you anoint my head with oil. It's a sign of anointing and calling and empowering. So God as, has us, right? And think about where you are in this flock of sheep. He has us as his sheep, and he's taken us. He knows us intimately. He knows the details of everything of your life. He has taken you out of those times, and he's corrected you if needed. He's restored you if needed. He's sent you back into the flock, and now he's calling you out, and he's anointing you. And just as King David, when he was in the field with his sheep, and um, Samuel was coming in and looking for the king to, who am I going to anoint as the future king of Israel? He anointed King David, and he poured the oil over his head. God wants to anoint each and every one of you guys to go out and to be empowered to do his work. 
David sees the good shepherd as he's penning this psalm, and he sees over the entire course of his life the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he looks through it, and he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he goes through that whole beautiful psalm. It doesn't matter what man sees of David. Some loved him, some hated him. It doesn't matter what people think of you. Some will love you, and some will hate you, and some you just can't make it you know, work, whatever. It doesn't matter. What does God see when he sees you? The one who called David was God. The one who anointed and chose him was God. It was God who does it. And then he breaks out in this worship. My cup runs over. Surely the Lord is my shepherd and he is with me. I shall not want. I can trust. I can rest. I'm blessed. I'm called with a purpose. And here I go. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ultimately, even a king in a palace is saying, okay, all of this stuff, that's great, but eventually I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and that is the exciting part. He's going to lead us and guide us. But so for what I want to ask you guys is, in this flock of sheep, who are you? Where are you at? Are you content just being any sheep or just being a sheep? Or do you want to be his sheep? Do you want God to call you out with him? And when he calls you, are you going to respond? Are you going to listen? Are you going to go after him? Because God calls Jesus the good shepherd. And Jesus says that my sheep will know my voice and they will follow me. If we need to be made right with God right now, if you're in a funky place and where you need to be brought in and you need to be refreshed and you need to be set right and empowered and sent out to the Lord, I would love to pray with you guys. I know that we're all in, I mean, I don't know. I think I went like, I know I went way over because I didn't even get through my notes. I just like skipped because I know I'm behind on time. But um, I just think it's really important right now, you guys, the, we, you can see kind of anywhere you look, like, time is short, right? <laughs> like, Jesus is coming back, and that is something that is so, so serious and so on my heart right now because I know it's like we can all be sheep and we can all be happy and we can all pretend like we're just, you know, fat little sheep walking around and just loving Jesus, but are you walking with Jesus? Are you listening to the voice of your shepherd? Are you allowing him to lead and guide you? You guys, he is faithful, and he knows exactly what we need. He knows the best way for us to be refreshed. He knows the best way for us to be restored. Um, Yeah, and I just want to end it with saying, if you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior of your life, Because we can go about and play this game of Christianity, and we can go about and play this game like we all go to church on Sunday, and that's awesome, and we can, you know, raise our hands and worship, but is God in charge of your life? Is he the Lord of your life? Have you known what Jesus did? The Bible calls Jesus the, um, he was the lamb that was slaughtered, right? And as a sheep before his shearer was silent, and he opened not his mouth. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And when John, in, in the Gospels, John the Baptist looked at Jesus and he said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He related us so much to these sheep and shepherds. So as we study this and as we look on this, I just really, like, if, if in your heart in any way, shape, or form, you feel that you're not right with the Lord, that you're not restored, that you're not being used how you want to be used, I just encourage you guys to take this time, whether you want to pray together as a, you know, your little group that you guys are in, or if you want to come up here during worship, and we'll have a couple of us ladies, if Sarah, Tracy, Rhonda, Fox, I'll be up here, um, we can just well, we'd love to pray for you guys and just to see what it is that you need prayer for. But, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you guys to close out. Um, if you know for a fact that if you've never received the Lord before and you know that you're a sinner 
you're one of those sheep that just likes to run away or you just like to be a naughty sheep, whatever it is, God has sent his only son to die on the cross for your sins. And when Jesus hung on that cross, he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. I'm sure that you know none of us is perfect, right? Like we all have our problems. We all have the things that we mess up on, but he paid the price for that for you so that you could live completely restored to God in that good relationship with your shepherd. So let's pray. If you have anything, we'll be up here for you guys. And otherwise, I just pray that you guys go home and you dive into this psalm because to me, it was such a sweet, sweet reminder of one, how silly and how dumb I am and how quickly I want to run away from my shepherd and how when I get myself in a bad situation, he is the one who he will restore me and he will set me right. He's the one who gives me the food and nutrients and refreshes me and sends me out.